My name is Mary Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth McDowell, better known as Libby, and my birth date is 2-27-1928. And where were you born? In Virginia. What city? Near Radford, Near Radford, which is in the southwest corner of Virginia. Okay. And what, uh, what brought you to Carroll County? Well, I went to nursing school in Baltimore and I was teaching at a school of nursing there. The school of nursing was closing. And by that time, my brother-in-law had given us property to build on. So we moved here and I was promised a job at the vocational center as soon as it opened. What, what was the name of the vocational center, do you remember? Carroll County Vocational Center. It's something else now. Carroll okay. County Technical Center, I think. Was that to do nursing? Yes. I started the, to, to work as a no, I started the LPN program at the uh, Votech. Oh, so you were a teacher. Right. Oh. right. I had my degree in teaching from college before I went to nursing school. What college? Radford College. Radford College. It's Radford University now. Right. And then you came here and went to Hopkins? Yes. And what degree did you get from Hopkins? Pardon me? What degree did you get? Nursing. You got your, your BSN in nursing? Yes. Okay. And then you came here and you started with the... Uh, right. You started the nursing program here in Carroll County. Right. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, when we first started out, we had um, full classes, but gradually the number of students dwindled because the counselors were encouraging them not to take the nursing program, if they wanted to be nurses, to go on to, to college. But we found that a lot of our LPN students, once they graduated, they worked and put themselves through college, and the majority of them did go on to RN school. Okay. So how long did you work at this? Uh, I was there about 13 years, I think. Okay. And um, when you moved to uh, Patapsco in this area in Carroll County, what year was that? 1966. 1966, and that was you and your husband. And you right. built the house that you live in now? Yes. Okay, and so you've lived there ever since? Yes. And can you tell me anything about your neighbors? Well, we have more neighbors now than we had when we moved here. We've had very nice neighbors, all of them. But when we first moved here, we had a cornfield next to us where a house sits now. And we had a cornfield across the road from us where houses sit now. So we've acquired quite a few, but as I say, they've all been very nice neighbors. Very nice. And um, what did your husband do? What was your he husband? was an automobile mechanic for the uh, city of Baltimore, police cars. Okay. okay, so he had to commute. Yes. How did he get to work? Did he drive or did mm -hmm. he take the train? No, we drove, which is another reason why I decided to start working up here because I was driving back and forth every day with two small children to take care of and it, it was just too much. Sometimes on Friday afternoons it would take me an hour and a half to get home and I, I just couldn't handle that. And that was because of the traffic? Yes. And that was in the 60s? That was before 795 was built so we had to come up Reisterstown Road. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, let's see. Where did, you, um, where did you sort of shop for groceries around here? Where did you get your food? Uh, in Westminster. Westminster. At different grocery stores. I frequented several of them. Do you remember what it was like walking down the streets in Westminster? Was Quite very, different than it is today. Yeah, what, what's, what's different about that? Uh, Different stores, for one thing. A lot of the older stores that are gone now were there. And I don't go into Westminster. Uh, rarely I go into Westminster now because, well, of course, I can't get around that well now. And I just don't go in there to shop much. But I know there are some nice stores in Westminster. And if I were able to get around a little better, I probably would go to some of them. 
Well, what can you tell me about the stores you remember when you were able to get around and you had your kids and things like that? Do you remember anything in particular? What it was like going into them? Not really. No? Not really. Okay. And uh, what was your favorite place to go in Carroll County? Farm Museum. The Farm Museum? Mm -hmm. Why is that? I enjoyed the old time things, the demonstrations they gave. I especially enjoyed the quilting. I enjoyed watching that. Are you involved in quilting now? I took a class in quilting, but I, I can't quilt. You can't quilt anymore, so you're not involved with that no. group, okay? And I do um, a lot of other crafts, but no quilting. Do you do other crafts? What sort oh of yes, uh, counter cross stitch, knitting, crochet. I knit sweaters for a group in. New York God Post Knit for Kids. They send sweaters all over the world. In fact, I just mailed a box of about a dozen sweaters to them last week. And I crochet uh, and knit blankets for um, Project Linus here in Carroll County. What is that? They uh, take blankets mostly for sick children. They uh, deliver them to children in the different hospitals, nursing homes for some of the older patients, and comforting for them. And um, did you get married in Carroll County? Or were no, you, no, we were married in Virginia. You were married in Virginia, okay. And um, do, you, do you miss anything about Carroll County as it used to be, or? Well, I miss the fact that there was much less traffic than there is now. It was easier for me to get around. And what, if you were to describe what is best about Carroll County to someone who's never visited, what would you say? I think it's a beautiful county. And I think most of the people are very friendly. I've really enjoyed that. And of course, having grown up in the country, I enjoy the, the country part of Carroll County. Did you ever grow any of your own food or? Um... I used to have a garden every summer, but I got to the point that I couldn't take care of it. But you still have a, a, a lot of plants and things. Yes, like yes. So what's your interest in uh, plants now? Can you talk a little bit about that? I, I guess I just like seeing things grow. And I think the, the orchids especially are so beautiful. So you grow a lot of orchids? Yes. All right, now I want you to talk a little bit about living in Patasco, this area here, and uh, your involvement with your church, the name of your church, yes. that sort of thing. So anything you want to talk about, let's, let's hear about what, uh, what you're most maybe passionate about or what, what your best memories are. I feel very close to a lot of the church members, and I feel we've had some very good ministers in the past. I didn't grow up in the Methodist church. I grew up in the uh, Christian church. Disciples of Christ. My father was a minister. So there's been a little difference between the two churches. What's the name of the church that you attend now? Pardon me? What is the name of the church that you attend now? Patapsco United Methodist. And how are you involved with the church? I'm not very much involved now, I, except for attending church, because I'm just not able to do a lot. I used to help a lot at the church and or in the hall at the uh, dinners every Wednesday, mm -hmm. but I'm not able to do any of that now, and I really miss that. Okay. But there's there's so much socialization with the women. We have so much fun when we get together. My next door neighbor, his wife still works in Baltimore, and he goes down on Wednesdays and helps scrape the dishes, and he he talks about how friendly the people are and how much fun they have there on Wednesdays. It's just a, a, almost like a family social gathering. What's your neighbor's name? Pardon me? What is your neighbor's name? Um, Why, that's okay. Tom. I, I can't remember his last name. That's okay. That's okay. All right. And um, what, do you, what do you, what can you tell me about Patapsco, about living in, in this area? Um, is there anything, has it changed much? In some ways it has. It's not as country now as it used to be. I mean, people are more oriented to 
Westminster and to town than they are to the little community now. Um, there's no, um, I don't know, there's a feeling that, that you've lost some of the closeness in the community, I think. So can you tell me a little bit about these lunches? What's, uh, do you go down to the lunches, the church hall? I, I don't go very often now, but I used to help all the time. Mm -hmm. But I try to get down at least the um, Wednesdays that they have the women's meeting. I try to get down for that so I can keep up with what's going on. Oh, I didn't know they had a women's meeting. So they oh, had yes. that before, after the After, lunches? after. And what do they do at the women's meeting? Discuss various concerns of the, uh, of the society. Um, we help the church considerably with donations of money, mm -hmm. and we discuss problems that involve both the church and the church hall, and simply the running of the uh, women's society. Okay. 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 And um, what about wildlife out here? Have you seen? Do you see um, much wildlife out here? Where from? From where you are in the back? A lot of squirrels. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any rabbits yet this year. And there used to be a little red fox that lived in the field behind the house, but I haven't seen him for several years now. Uh, when the cornfield was across the road, we had a lot of um, animals then, and we still do have deer now and then. One Sunday several years ago, I looked out the back here, and there were about a dozen deer in the field back of the house here. They tell me that they're there of mornings, but I guess I, I just don't get up early enough to, to see them. How much land do you own here? We only own an acre. You own an acre? Okay. But there's so uh, twenty acres in the, the whole farm. That and and tell me about the farm. How it, who owned the farm originally? My uh, sister-in-law, and her husband. What, do you remember their names? Satterfield. Satterfield. Mm -hmm. What was their first names? Uh, Pat and. Um, Um, so they own the farm, and then when you and your husband were married, they offered you some land to right. come out. Well, it was several years later. Several years later. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, do they still own land out here? No, my, they're both dead. Okay. After my sister-in-law died, my uh, Wilbur, is his name. Wilbur Satterfield? Yes. Okay. He moved into an apartment in Westminster and kept the farm for uh, three or four years, I guess, and then he decided to sell it. And that's when uh, Wayne Jones bought it. Okay, Wayne Jones. Okay, great. All right. Now, is there anything, uh, do you have any special memories, that anything that really comes to mind about living here? Anything that maybe fondness of Christmas or the holidays? Well, uh, during the summer each year for several years, we had a community picnic. And it got to the point that a few couldn't come and eventually that died out. So was this at the Tasco community? Or no, the just community? just this community around this. Right here, uh -huh. in this little area. And each summer we do have our Sunday school picnic at Adele Gray's. And we have a very good crowd there. We used to play baseball, but a lot of the people who played baseball are to the point where now they, they can't play, play baseball. So that is, but they still, we still have a lot of fun. Can at you the tell picnic. Me what you do at the picnics? Um, most of us just sit around and talk. What sort of food do you have? Everything. Everything. We saw have so, so much food that you carry home almost half of what you took. Well, like fried chicken, potato salad, baked beans, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers. And for the most part, people, <clears throat> no, you're not playing a lot of games, you're just sort of sitting around. And right, nice. right. The kids play. And the adults, I think last summer they did play ball for a few minutes, but that didn't last long. Right. And of course, at Christmas time, we have our uh, Sunday school Christmas program. And what is that? Uh, where is it? What is it? What, what, is, is, what is that involved? Uh, the Christmas story, mainly. The Sunday school students. Uh, and some of the classes that don't get involved in the actual Christmas story have little skits that they perform. So can you tell me a little bit about this since I don't know anything at all about it. 
do the people come to the church? Is it done inside the church, outside the church, or someplace else? Where the Christmas program? Uh -huh. That's at the church hall. It's at the church hall. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's like a little play? Right, right. And um, the kids are involved in that? Yes, yes. And then, of course, at Easter, we have our sunrise service. And, and that's that? outside the church. Uh, there's a big cross behind the church, and we gather there under the cross for that service. And what does that service involve? Can you tell me a little bit Just about uh, a scripture and a couple of hymns, and the uh, minister speaks for a few minutes. It only lasts about a half an hour. Are you all standing out there? Yes, oh. yes. They usually take a chair out for me, but... Yes, and it's a little chilly some Easter Sunday mornings, especially when Easter comes very early. As it did this year. Uh huh. Because uh -huh. we meet at I think six thirty. Oh. We meet, oh. so it's chilly. Yeah. So can you tell me about any of the um, the friends that you've made being at the church? Can you remember any of the names of any of your friends? I guess Fira is the closest friend I have. I feel friendly with the others, but it's not like. Uh, I go out to lunch with Vera once in a while, and the other ladies, I, I don't really socialize with them that much. Um, Is that because it's hard for you to get around and that sort of thing? Uh, we used to have a progressive dinner with the church, and then we'd go around to the different homes, and I guess I saw more of the homes then than I have any other time. We start with the uh, salad, one place, and then we move on to an um, entree, and then dessert somewhere else. That sounds like fun. It is fun. And that can take up a whole evening. It does, yes. <laughs> That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Is there any, any changes you'd like to see come about that haven't, anything you want to see done that hasn't been done, or... How do, how do you feel about the old, the old church that's falling down in the village, the one that happens to be next to my house? Um, what would you think should be done with that? I, I, I don't know because I don't really know that much about it. Mm -hmm. I'm too new in the mm -hmm. area. I mean, 40 years is still new as far as the community is concerned. Do you think it should be saved or do you think it should just be torn down? I don't know that it would mean that much to most of the people. Oh, really? To save it or tear it down, it doesn't really matter? I, to me, I, it doesn't. Okay. Because it, it has no memories for me. Right, right, of course. I'm just thinking as part of the aesthetic of the... Right, area. right. Do you think it would... It certainly would be nice if it could be fixed up, It would, so that it looked better than it does. Right, yeah. That would be something. So is there anything in particular, any... Um, particular memories that you want to um, share about your life here in Cadell County that maybe we haven't covered or addressed? Anything that when you think back you think, oh God, this is, this is a great day? Or I really can't day. think of anything. What about it's, your children? Where do they go to school? Uh, they're both married and have families. They went to uh, uh, Westminster High School. Mm -hmm. They went to Sandy Mount School for elementary school, then West Middle and then to Westminster High School. And what are the names of your children? Ann Carball, who lives with me, and Kathy Gilbert, who lives out past the airport. And are they both married? Yes. And so they all both have Kathy children? has three children. One graduates from high school this spring, and Ann and her husband and their little seven-year-old live here with me. Can you tell me the names of the grandchildren? Uh, Lindsay, Daniel, Ryan. Or what? Kathy's, they're Kathy's and children. And your last name? Gilbert. Gil Gilbert, okay. And Emily Carball, who just turned seven in April. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. So uh, it must bring you a lot of joy having Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'd like to have more, but... <laughs> what it, do you and your grandchildren, um, can you think of any things that you do that might be... <laughs> well, my two grandsons and I love to play Scrabble. And the older one beats me every time I play with him. And the younger one gets a little upset. He's like his other grandmother. If he can't win, 
he doesn't want to play. And I keep saying, I don't play for the win. I play because I enjoy doing it. It's like crossword puzzles for, for me, and I love doing crossword puzzles. But uh, we used to have a swimming pool, and they were here a lot in the summertime with that. Well, they have a nice big end ground one at their house now, so they don't come down as often as they did. But when they do, it's Scrabble. Yes, yes. Do you play cards? They like to play spoons. I don't know how to play spoons. Well, I didn't either. And I'm not sure I understand exactly what it is, but you have a deck of cards and you deal some of them out. And when you get, I'm not sure if it's three or four cards alike. Oh, you start out with spoons in the middle of the table, one less than the number of players. So as soon as you have, say, four cards alike, you grab for a spoon and two other people grab for spoons. And the one who doesn't grab soon enough is out of the game. <laughs> it's a lot of fun for young people. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, when your kids were young and you lived here, what sort of games did you play with them? Or do you remember what sort of games not, they played? Not very much because I didn't have time. I was, I was working sometimes six days a week, and I really didn't have time to play with them that much. Well, when you quit working at the school, uh, where did you go from there? I went to Springfield. I wanted to stay in the state retirement system, so I worked at Springfield for five and a half years till I was old enough to retire. What's Springfield? Springfield Hospital, Sykesville. And did you have a specialty? Did you have a specific area you worked in, or were you no. just in general? No. You work wherever they needed you. Yes. And I was supervisor part of the time. So you enjoyed nursing quite a bit? I didn't enjoy Springfield. Oh, no? No. I enjoyed nursing. Well, after I retired, I went back to work and went to uh, Taylor Manor Hospital in uh, Ellicott City, which is a private mental institution, and I was there for another five years, and then I re-retired. By that time, I was babysitting two grandsons, and shortly after that, I was babysitting not only those two, but a third one, plus two of my daughter's friend. So I had enough to keep me busy. So you went into daycare. In right, sense. right. <laughs> well, that keeps you young. Well, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, um, I think we've covered pretty much everything, unless there's anything special that you wanted to tell me. I can't really think of anything. Okay, all right. Do you want to say anything special to your family? Because this is going to go on tape until we get a copy of it. Anything you want no. to say to your family? Just that I love them very much.